Hello, hello. What's going on? I'm, I'm hoping that um, everyone can hear us. You know, we're live from our conference room today. We're having some uh, Wi-Fi difficulties out in our studio. You know, the damn wind here in Nebraska just keeps kicking us off. It's, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So I'm hoping that this works out. If it doesn't, you know, we'll probably call it a day and we'll we'll, we'll tune in back Friday. But yeah. um, so let us know some feedback here in the in the chat here. Maybe give me a one if we're good. Maybe a two for bad. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I, you know, I, sometimes you just have to take uh, take the good with the bad. Adversity is kind of an interesting thing. You know, we just and we just get so excited to do this too. So it's like we're not missing. Um, you know, we're not going to miss today's show. We're going to make it happen, and we're in our little conference room where this is actually where we do our demos. Yep. So if some of you uh, have seen this room. Some of you have not. You know, we got some trucking stuff back here. Um, truck up there as well so it's a nice little conference room but yeah we we uh we share it with a couple other startups kind of a fun uh, kind of a fun environment in here um you know I, I, today we're talking about cold calling and again we're not 100 percent sure if you guys can even hear us to be honest with you we can't gonna, see the chat i'm gonna go to um, my uh my you youtube know, we'll on my see phone we'll here. see if uh nate can get it on his phone but you know we're talking about cold calling uh, we get a lot of questions on cold calling and cadences and, and things like that. And, and so today we wanted to, to chat through that. Um, there's some incredible influencers online. Um, and, and I found a post that I, I want to read and just see, uh, you know, people can hear us and, and okay, Tyler, cool. Tyler Killer. cool. Tyler Tyler Killer's here. T Harris. What's going on? What's up guys. Good to have you on. Good to have you on. Um, but, I, but I got to read you this, this deal from LinkedIn this morning. Okay. Um, this gal's name is Christina Booker, uh, and she talks about sales and prospecting. And she says, I've read the books. I've listened to the podcast. I've bought the sales master classes. I've spent hundreds of hours and hundreds of dollars learning sales. I've done that exact same thing, by the way. You know, I've got yeah. the holy buckets. Yeah. My entire basement is full of books. Now I've switched over to di digital books. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she, can, she goes, I can tell you now the only thing that that'll help you get better at sales is actually just picking up the phone and doing it, right? Picking up the phone and cold calling, writing prospecting emails, being told no time and time again, being hum, hug, hung up on, experiencing failure and lost sales prospecting, ghosting you. And last but not least, learning from every sales interaction. Right. I love this post, right? Uh, you know, really, the you've got to take the time to just experience sales as a journey you know what i mean like imagine you're just out you're walking through a friggin hill you know you got to stop every nine every now and then and catch your breath right i do <laughs> i'm out i'm out of shape right well and i think that's with everything in life right but obviously we're just specifically talking sales but think about the time you first tried riding a bike right you just got to get up and try it again mm. um you got to learn to fall down and i you know that's part of that post is you got to learn to you know get hung up on you got to learn to get yelled at just gotta learn to get negative feedback. Yeah, let her let her brush off. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Don't, don't take things personal. Have a right? short term memory and right. just kind of keep pushing. Exactly. I, I like the way she ends it. She says, "Keep going, yeah. keep learning, keep emailing, keep interacting, keep tweaking that secret sauce until it's damn near perfect." Happy prospecting. Oh, wow. And and I loved this post this morning because, you know, we talk about this a lot. We talk about you know, uh, you know, tweaking. Yeah recording yourself, thinking about how do you do this or that. Right. And it really is just picking up the phone. You know, we have a lot of people that watch uh, our cold call videos. Yeah. Uh, and we'll start again up in March uh, with our cold call videos. We're excited about that. Um, but, boy, I tell you what, you just have to pick up the phone and not mm. and not be afraid. Right. Tire Killer says, never a failure, just learning another way to not do it. That's exactly. Uh, Kristen Anderson, hi, thanks for being here. Looking at the chat on my phone, um, we're having some uh, comment difficulties and Wi-Fi difficulties. But I see you guys in the chat. Thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, so a couple things that we wanted to talk about, and I wanted to at least explain. So this week, I do cold calls every week with brokers, um, and I love that. I'm a big fan. In fact, I was doing cold calls this morning before we found out that we did some Wi-Fi issues. <laughs> you, it's nonstop cold calling in your life. <laughs> it is nonstop cold calling. I, I think I did I did a hundred cold calls yesterday. Hundred and now it'd have been a little less. It'd have been like 75 this morning, right? So We're just kind of plowing out cold 175 calls. 175 right? then. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday. And and you know, we did cold calls Monday as well, uh, which I thought was awesome. And 
it's amazing how many people, if you have a friendly tone in your voice, by the way, this is something I think is really important. Just be, don't be, I mean, be yourself. That's being genuine is really important. You don't have to lie to them and say, I got a truck in here. <laughs> just being yourself. You know what I mean? Like I had more just conversations right. this week than I did really calling. Does that make sense? Just, you know, how are you moving your freight? How are you making those decisions? What are you doing and, to keep up with these three trends that I'm seeing? And you pick up on, uh, you know, if you're just trying to have a conversation, you pick on, okay, you can pick up on quickly if, like, they're being rushed because if they're rushed, they're probably busy, right? Mm. Um, so you can pick on those things, you know, pretty quickly as you start making those calls. Um, I know with the ones that you made live, you you there's a point in time where – can I maybe ask about the weather or, yeah. hey, let's get right to business, right? right? So right. Um, th you'll pick up on that very quickly. I, you do. It's a pattern thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I made the guy I called with this morning. I, this cat doesn't like to pick up the phone. Okay. I, he is so knowledgeable about the industry. Right. He gets the industry better than probably most. Right. Um, he has an engineering background. He just doesn't like to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. But guess what this industry has done is we've seen it go down, right? We've seen seen that go down. Sorry, we're uh, I, I'm getting updates. I didn't realize that was coming through. Uh, but, you know, he's terrible at the phone, but has that engineering mind. Yep. And because the industry has kind of shrank a little bit, guess what? You know, he's, he's being forced to make cold calls. Exactly. And uh, what I thought was probably the most interesting thing about this morning's calls, because he's the one that's terrible at him. <laughs> I mean, really bad. Um, I hope he's not watching. Just well, <laughs> you know, what do you do? If he is, he is. He knows who he is. Um, I told him, I said, you know, you need to just go to a coffee shop and just practice on small conversation. Mm -hmm. Go to the grocery store, get a basket, and just have a conversation. I think he just struggles with conversations. Yeah. You know, he's a work from home kind of guy, right? right? He, he'd rather just kind of work behind his computer. And man, I think it's really important that you put yourself in those situations, coffee shops, grocery stores, and just say hi to people. Right. Just see how their day is going. Right. And if you're, I think if you're able to, because a lot of the freight brokers we talk, talk to, they are working from home, right? Either agents or yeah. just work from home, have their own company. Yeah. Um, depending on where you're at, obviously, if you're in a little town like us, not a whole lot going on, but yeah. try to go do some face to face, um, you know, sales and just kind of chat, right? Yeah, um, that's just one method of what I think people should be doing, uh, as far as trying to grow their company. And you know, T. Harris says, Don't be afraid to fail often, change it before it changes you. Um, and then YCF Invader. Shout out oh, to this you. is our guy. This is our, our guy. Uh, we we got to get. We got to connect too. We got your way. phone number from Adam. We'll give you a call. Yeah, yeah. We should try to do that this um, afternoon. Maybe it's I, the hardest thing. Or it's let the us hardest, know if we can call you. Thing to do, yeah, <laughs> for sure, Invader. It's it's the hardest easy thing to do. Yeah, if we could get together, that'd be awesome. Uh, see if we can get together sometime here in the next couple of days. Um, I, you know, I gotta say, and we we haven't told anybody about this. Monday. And we're talking, it was like 7.30 our time. So mountain time, so 9.30 Eastern. Just in case anyone's wondering, that's 4.30 or it was it was 4.30 Paris time. This is exciting. This was wild. This cat calls in. He currently is a programmer for IBM, right? And he's like, hey, can I do some cold calling with you? And I'm like, we. Oui. We oui, we oui. yeah yeah I mean we <laughs> yes, straight up we, we straight this. up went French and this cat you know he knows he know he knew three different languages yeah. he knew English French Arabic Arabic Spanish probably I, I, I would name it the, the, the guy knew a lot of languages he got on you know this this website that that you use to find people that are moving freight in and out of you know France and and Northern Africa right, right. and we started making calls. And I tell you what, you know, if you study communication and languages um, and, and how to and relationships, right? You need to be listening and, and those things. I, here's what I learned from international cold calling <laughs> was they're very direct and they're very to the point. And to be honest with you, sometimes I think that's really important to just get out what you're saying. You don't have to have a little bit of that small talk, but you got to be able to communicate and understand the the, right. the person on the other phone. 
-hmm. right? You got to understand, are they wanting to get right to the point or are they wanting to have a quick chat? You know what I mean? Yeah. And from what we were listening, we had Google, Jared had like Google Translate, literally just holding it up right here. Yeah. But what we picked up was, you know, it seemed like one person was talking more than the other, and then they kind of stumbled over each other. But that's just how they do it over yeah. there, right? It's a lot different than here. Um, in my opinion, Americans, you know, we, you know, if you don't have the time of day, you're going to let them know. Yeah. Got to go, right? Well, it just seemed like these people were more or less just kind of. It was more of a lot of talking really fast. Yeah. Um, like I said, that's just how they do it over there. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he did a great job for being a programmer and yeah. making cold calls. He sounded great from what we picked up. You know, he got right to the point. He was saying the right things. Yeah. Um, so it was really interesting to see some French cold calls. I loved it. I We are international cold call stars. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah, it'd be entertaining to get him on the show and do this live. I know, it's, I know. time difference is hard. but Yeah, I don't know how that would even work. But it's just crazy <laughs> to see what's going on, on an, in another country. It's like, man, just people grinding like we are. and Yeah. They just do a little bit different. Oh, absolutely. Um, so a couple things from this week, just for the sake of statistics. When I was doing calls in December, November, October of last year, mm -hmm. we might talk to one out of ten. Yeah. Back then, oh, yeah. October, November, November, the Q4, right. you were talking to one, maybe. And the other challenge was, was you were, um, I, you know, I mean, a lot of people just weren't even, they wouldn't even take the call. It was oh, wild. Yeah. October, November, December is a completely different environment from what January, February are. For sure. We're hearing more people talking to people. You know, yesterday's cold call sesh with a guy that knows kind of what he's doing. Um I had a really good conversation. We talked to probably five out of 10 people on those calls. Now we're still getting, Hey, we're not taking people on or we're not interested in that. Um, you know, when we changed up what we were saying to the gatekeeper mm -hmm. and I'll give you some examples of what we were saying. Um, we found that we were able to get into them a little bit quicker. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll give you an example. Okay. Yesterday, first four calls, all four of those gatekeepers uh, said the same thing. We're not taking any carriers uh, or broker, brokers right now. We're not really interested. And so well, let's change that up. Let's change up what we say, right? And so we changed up and said, hey, you know, we use a digital platform to vet so that we're not dealing with double brokering. I'd love to talk to your shipping manager to talk about our processes and how we move freight without double brokering. Mm. Guess what happened on the next three calls? We got past those gatekeepers. Right. Now, I don't know what they would have said if we would have said the other thing. If they'd have said, no, they didn't, they didn't really want them. Right. But it sounded different and different enough that they were like, yeah, I'll send you through. Yeah. So 12, 15 words changing that that aspect. And right. we just adapted right there. We just were flexible. Mm. Hey, we had these four freaking calls. They didn't work. Let's try yeah. it a different way. This is what that gal is saying. Right. Tweak. Tweak. Yeah. Until you get it seems to be the word of the week. Adapt. Yeah. Be flexible. Be flexible for sure. And something that uh, I'll pull it up here that Will Jenkins, shout out to you, man. Oh, yeah. What did Will say? If you yeah. guys don't follow Will, this guy will give you a little bit of peace of mind every day yeah. um, and just make you feel good. Right. Make you and make you want to go. Hmm, and this guy has built some really successful companies. And, yeah. you know, if you're not taking the feedback like him from him, it's like, you know, you got to change it up, man. Like no, this, this guy knows to. what he's doing. And, um, you know, your sales effort needs to be multi-channel. Mm. Think about multi-channels. Um, what does that mean? Emails, video messages, uh, cold calls, voicemails, um, content creation. I love that. Um, text messages, if you're bold enough. And handwritten notes. I know you're big into handwritten I notes, am. too. I love, I love the old school approach. And, and then um, LI messages. I'm not sure what that is. LinkedIn messages. Link. Uh, yeah, LinkedIn messages. You know, messages. sometimes it takes me a minute. It's okay. But LinkedIn message, that's another good one as well. But this is a good way for you to multi-channel um, your efforts. Um, and then obviously, you know, there's a few other ideas that maybe he didn't say and maybe you guys can think of. But that's incredibly important just to be different. Um, is this a set all be all? Is this, and he says, is this, you know, are, you know, and no, none of these are the golden ticket, right? None of these right. are going to work overnight. You know, you have to, like you said, adapt. You know, if this is working this week, let's roll with it. Yeah. Okay, emails aren't working. Well, let's call. Yeah, calls aren't working. Let's get into LinkedIn, yeah. shoot some video calls, messages, 
Um, so that was his post this morning, and I really like that mm. the multi-channel efforts. I love that. Um, the, the guy that I called, uh, that I did calls with last week, it had been Thursday or Friday. Um, I asked him, I said, well, who are we calling today? And he goes, it's not about who we're calling, but it's about the amount of times I've called them. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And so in his pipeline, this is really interesting. He has a pipeline sheet set up, right? And he's got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. And it's just an Excel sheet. And he has these people situated in a setting where it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Go well, did it not go well? And then he has another sheet where he starts marking down. It's on, it's on the same column. This is my fourth touch. Mm -hmm. This is my fifth touch, my sixth touch. Every one of the calls that we made together last week, mm -hmm. they were seven touch pluses. Which is wild. I was like, I was like, so who are we calling? He goes, it's not really about who we're calling. It's about the amount of consistency I've provided with each of these people. Mm -hmm. Which was wonderful, yeah. right? Um, and he had wrote down, you know, I've called this guy this many times, this, this, you know, this aspect. Mm -hmm. And so he just pulled up all these people and we called. We actually ended up talking to four of the, right. I think we called 15 together. Right. We talked to four of them. All of them said the same thing. They go, well, you're more consistent than most. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, one of them called him Monday, wanted a quote. Really? That's awesome. Yeah, I got to hear some of those phone calls too. And I think one of the, um, the companies he called was, this is the word for word. He goes, hey, I don't do that annoying sales guy, but, you know, we chatted last week. And it kind of went from there. And, you know, they were on the phone for quite a while and just kind of chatting. And I think that um, he was able to quote them as well. Yeah. But, consistency man and i love how yeah. he's updating that pipeline and that's super huge to be mm. doing super important because yeah. you know you got to understand how many times you, you touch that person yeah what was said you know that's just really important yeah absolutely easy to get you know easy to lose track of for sure but right you got to do it yeah because the, the front end is like what will was talking about right emails calls linkedin messages all that stuff right yeah but on the back end of things you've got to understand how many different times you're going to touch them right right and the different variations and, and whatnot, right? And provide and provide some good knowledge. You know, when you're calling, you know, provide a way for you to help them. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to call and just say, hey, you know, we chatted last week and you know, can we get set up yet? Right. Like you want to provide some knowledge for him, whether it's something pertaining, preferably something pertaining to their industry. Right. But you gotta be you just gotta be different, man. Like it could be personal, too. It could be personal, very it could true. Be personal, right? you know. I mean, a lot of these people talk about their personal preferences on their LinkedIn, right? Yeah, yeah. So why not follow that, understand it, and then when you see something that maybe would hit, hit, right, right, and then come back, yeah. right. So I think that's really important. You got to get crafty. You, know you what do I mean? have to get crafty. There's some English on that. I'm a big basketball guy. There's some English on it. But uh, Tyler Killer says just wing it, go with your gut. That's the Tyler Killer way. Mm -hmm. I, I freaking love Tyler Killer. Where's Tire Killer at? I, I love guessing where yeah. he's at. I'm gonna guess he is Southern Illinois. That's where I'm guessing. Let's see where he's at. We will yeah, see. I'm curious. You Where's know, the other guy too? The guy from Missouri. Where's WC Vader? Where are you at today, man? What are you up to? Yeah, let us know in the chat. Yeah. Um, let's talk about. You're making fun a bunch of phone calls. We're halfway through the week. You said you're 175 calls in. You know what are these brokers that you're talking with? You know how are they just keeping themselves sane? You know it's got, it's not easy to make a hundred some calls. Mm. It's not easy getting hung up on like how you know what's the how are they handling this frustration? You know how do they keep the motivation to keep calling? Um, you know give us a couple of things that you're hearing from them and mm. maybe some things that you that you did back in the day to personally help you get through this. Yeah, I, I, this is a big thing for me. Mental health. And staying consistent and staying motivated are a big, big subject for me, right? Um, I'll give you a couple things that I saw that, you know, I can see the brokers that really find a lot of success. I can see, you know, they, they have a way to release. They've identified a way to release tension and stress. For me, it was walking. Yep. It was working out. It was doing those things. Um, that was a big thing for me. If I got out in Mother Nature and I felt the, the, the sun touch my skin and, and those things like that, that's huge, right? If you're at that point where you're frustrated or don't feel like you're getting anywhere, mm -hmm. I do two things. This is this is it. Number one, I'm a big believer in getting out, okay? Getting out, walk, 
do anything to get a little bit of sweat going or your heart rate going, right? Whatever that is, okay? Here's number two, and this was me. This was my secret sauce. And I think this is really important, is I think it's important to try to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. It takes my mind off of maybe what I was doing, okay. and I like to help other people, right? That's awesome, yeah. And so whatever that may be, but that's what fills my cup, right? Mm. So today, when I was talking to that guy that's terrible at sales, right, and he's kind of not having – he's having an okay week. Right. Um, it's not great. It's not It's not bad. It's just it's there. Yeah. I told him today, I said, here's what I want you to do is I want you to go push the random shipper button 50 times, mm. pick up the phone. And I don't even want you to sell anything. I want you to just call and ask about their processes. Right. Hey, you know, I'm not really looking to actually move anything for you. I'm just trying to learn. Can you give me an understanding of how your day flows with, with not only movement of freight, but movement of, of communication, mm. what works for you and what doesn't? Mm. How that. many times have you tried to pick up the phone and not try to get business? Jeez. Right? Let's try something new. Yeah, let's so let's go and yeah. just say, hey, what works right now? What's not? What right. do you like about this industry? What do you not? What yeah, you just go have a conversation with people. Yeah, you really just don't know where that conversation is gonna go either, right? right? Hopefully something good comes out of it. Yeah. Hopefully you gain some knowledge and maybe hopefully you gain a new Sure. possibility at least you, you don't have know. a conversation right, right. so I, I think it's really important you have to understand what what fills your cup for me it was helping other people right. and b what changes your state of mind and that's mm. also working out right that. that's getting some sweat getting your right. heart rate going that's what worked for me right 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 uh there can be a lot of other things we, we could do some drugs <laughs> I'm just kidding. Four o'clock uh, Miller lights. Four o'clock Miller lights. I, you know, there's My a lot favorite. of other things you could be doing to yeah. change your state or change your kind of stuck in the mud situation, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, right? Right. But you gotta find what that is. Right. It could be two o'clock coffee. Yesterday, I was wired up like the friggin' bunny. I was a, I was the yes. Energizer Bunny yesterday. I was what a hot mess. The time down. And I, the problem was, is when I went home, my wife was like, "Are you okay?" I'm like. <laughs> I kind of, you know, right. I just had too much coffee today. You yeah. know, I was just, I was humming when I got home. <laughs> I, I was, it. I was just a hot potato. You oh, know what right. I did? I literally from, I walk in, I walk into my house. I got to just tell you this real quick. I walk into my house and my wife, my wife who hasn't been feeling the greatest right. is I said, Hey, how you doing? And she goes, not bad. And I said, what can I do right now to help you? And she goes, well, I don't know what the kids want for supper. And I said, I got it. You just, you be you relax, take care of yourself. And uh, she, so I walk out, I go, Hey, what does everyone want? They kind of said a multitude of things. I just looked at the one he said, he wants waffles. I said, perfect. I'll take care of waffles. Okay. Right. So I go get the box of waffle mix. I pound out four waffles, all different waffles, by the way, blueberry waffles, chocolate chip waffles, and two regular waffles, mm -hmm. all different toppings, whipped cream, butter, oh my gosh. Uh, syrup yeah. and strawberries. Right? I love that. I pound all that out. And four pieces of bacon, two pieces of sausage. Mm -hmm. I have it literally all cleaned up. I walked in at 5.05. I had it all cleaned up and was walking out of the house at 6.05, oh. going to the gym. Awesome. <laughs> I was wildly <laughs> fired up last night. I, woo, my oh wife has got to be like, what the hell's the matter? What did you guy? do at work yeah, I know, today? I know. Yeah, you yeah. and Nate doing the snow insults again? Yeah, it's, um, you get the horn, man. You know what I mean? Like, you just yeah. trying to horn it up. Invader, he's in Fort Wayne, Indiana, heading back to Missouri Shore. I love that. What kind of load are you moving? I'm wondering what kind of load he's moving. I always like to hear what Tire doing. Killers heading back to uh, Blytheville, Arizona. Nice. From Hop Hopkinville, Kentucky. Hmm. Hope I said that right. Um, if you're stuck in the mud, you got to just go look. I can't read today. Holy cow. It's okay. Or I need my old man glasses. If you you're stuck in the mud, you just got to lock that front uh, differential in and start digging, theoretically speaking. I love that. I can't get enough of trucking. I can't. I love this. <laughs> it's so good. It's uh, so good. I mean, it's right. You're, you're you're on the head, man. I love it. I love your feedback. Truly one of a kind, man. I love it. Um, gosh, Dan, I lost my train of thought. I was going to say. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love it. Everyone in the chat. It's awesome. You guys are too much today. Um, let's, let's talk through, we talked a little bit about kind of overcoming some stress. Yep. Talked about kind of different ways of, of, um, putting yourself out there, thinking differently. 
um, you know, we we got really big into creating content, and that truly has helped us find really a good amount of leads. Yeah, know, I got to say that for sure. And we've met some incredible people. Um, and I see constantly a lot of people. I'm looking at LinkedIn right now, and there's constantly freight brokers posting loads they've done mm -hmm. or they did that day. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of that because I think people notice that and they're like, oh, okay. You know, they take pride in what they do. Yep. I see what they're actually working with. Maybe it's an open deck kind of flat, uh, freight broker. You know, you just never know who's watching. It's yeah. kind of where I'm going with this. Yeah. Someone's always looking at it. I promise you. Like, like Jared and I are constantly looking at LinkedIn, seeing what brokers are doing, you know, reaching out to them, just saying, hey, how's things going? Right. If someone's always watching, you just mm -hmm. never know if it's going to be that next relationship. Yeah. So I, I think social I, media is a great. I think so too. I think it's sorry to interrupt you there. You're good. Honestly, I'm a big believer in finding a way to build your brand. Right. And because that can somewhat alleviate cold calling, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that could alleviate building trust up front right. when that person watching in the in the weeds, right? Maybe a shipping manager, whatever it may be, be like, God, I should just reach out to this guy. I have similar interests, mm -hmm. right? Or or I have something like that. So I'm a big believer in in just building some sort of brand. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different ways of branding, or there's a lot of different ways of putting content out there. We choose education, right? right? Our world and our hope is that we can educate people to get better at what they're doing, right. um, whether, whether it's trying to find trucks or cold calling or trying to find brokers or shippers, whatever it may be, right? right. This is what eCarrier Check does, right? There's people that choose humor and that can get that can build a brand. There's people that choose, you know, looks, right? I, I've seen some fairly attractive men and women that, that you know, do that as well, right? So I... I believe that you need to take time to build a brand. Don't be hidden in the weeds. But I think a lot of people are trying to build a brand right now. And you've got to make sure you're just staying more consistent than they are. I agree. Um, and you got to kind of stay in that boat if you're willing to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to build a brand, I'll give you an example. If you're a carrier out there, take pics of your, take pics of your, your trucks and your loads mm -hmm. and what you're doing. And maybe what what you like about fuel stops and what you don't, mm -hmm. what you like about certain lanes and what you don't, right? Yeah. If you're a broker, that same functionality can go a long way, right? And so uh, this is this is a great example. <laughs> Look at here. I, love, I this. love this guy, right? This is the cat that owns Jesse the Savannah Cole. Bananas. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he. But you can see he's he's building a brand better than almost anybody. Right, he's being different. Look yeah, that. he's being different. So find a way to be a little bit different. Uh, and, and do those things. But I think really, you know, LinkedIn is an incredible platform. 100%. Um, I, and just get out there and just be a part of, of that, that, yeah. that, that community. So, you know, one of the questions I, you know, obviously I answer the phone quite often. Um, we talk to people just thinking about getting into this industry, but sometimes they'll ask me, you know, am I getting into the right industry? Am I, yeah. Should I be doing this? Well, yeah. There's a lot of pros and cons, obviously. You can make some good money. You can work from home. Um, you can potentially do some traveling. Yeah. You know, kind of make your own schedule, but you're going to have to grind. And you know, I was talking to this guy earlier this week, and, I, you know, he's like, I'm pretty much starting over. And I was like, dude, you're going to have to pick up the phone 50 times a day mm -hmm. and try to, you know, be in a dispatcher. That's where you want to start. I was like, you're going to have to grind. Like, yeah. You're starting over. You know, nothing's going to happen. But it sounded like he has his why. Yeah. His why was his family. Mm. Better himself. And he's like, you know, I put all this money into it. I have to, I got to make it happen. So think about this, you know, before you get into this industry, is it for me? Yeah. Do your research. Think about the effort you're going to have to put in. It's not easy. You're right. going to lose sleep. Yeah. You're going to stretch yourself out. So back to what you're saying, take care of yourself. Yeah. But also you got to be consistent and do the hard work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love, uh, I love that he has a why. I think that's really important yeah. that you got to find out what motivates you. Cause honestly, sometimes that's the only thing that'll kind of keep you right. going. Right. That, you know, there, there's going to be a lot more dark days than positive days. Right. Um, and if you don't know what you're doing or why you're doing it for, mm -hmm. I think that's important. Yeah. Even, you know, one of my biggest motivators is looking at Nick Kling and Smith's account. I was trying to see if he posted anything today, but he's, he always posts some motivational video to kind of just, I don't know if it, you know, for me, it helps me, right. It kind of mm -hmm. helps me get going. Like, you know, make today 
you know, going to be your last day. If it's going to yeah. be your last day, what the heck are you going to do? Yeah, let's make You're going to grind. You're going to make it count. You're going to do what you need to do. You, know, you just got to lock it in, really. I've got some people in the chat here, but um, Ryan Holiday, what should a follow up call sound like after connecting uh, with a potential customer for the first time? You conduct and exchange paperwork, but now when you pick up the phone, what's your action item? Yeah, this is a great question. I love this question. Um, and this is something that I think is it, honestly for everybody, right? You know, what should your follow up call sound like after connecting? Um, for the first time, a couple of things that I believe that you need to do is a, if you were on that first call, you, have you ever watched a movie and you get to the end of the movie and you know, there's going to be a sequel. Yeah. Every call needs to be that way. Does that make sense? You have to finish your call in a sequel function. Okay. Like at the end of a movie, you just know it's like, Oh shit. I just watched a Marvel movie. There's probably going to be another one because just the guy just died, right? There's going to be another Fast and Furious. You need to think <laughs> about at the second call. And I'm going to talk yeah. about the structure of the second call in a second. But the first call has yeah. to sequel out. Mm. There's got to be an action item. There's got to be a connecting point. There's got to be a trust functionality that you hit on in that first call that connects you to the second one. Okay? Right? Those are things that you need to have in the, the uh, that there needs to be an action item. Sure. There needs to be an expectation of what they're expecting from paperwork or how you communicate and those things like that. Right. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the second call, but the first call has to have an action, an action item or a sequel based concept. Okay. Right. Don't just leave it like, you know, the end of Iron right, man. We'll talk later. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, yes. Hey, we'll talk. Next, yeah. You know, you know the movies that have sequels and they don't. Right. If you're in sales, you've got to make sure there's a sequel-based concept. Okay. I, I got to give you an example of this, and then I'll answer this question. I left a guy 24 voicemails. This would have been – well, this would have been four e-carrier check. I bet if – and I don't – I know we can't, right? Yeah. Um, but those 24 voicemails were one story. Interesting. <laughs> he had to have been, in fact, I know because I ended up talking to him somewhere on call 29 or 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every time I left a 40 to 55 second voicemail, it was a part of that story. He knew that I was calling back. He knew more about the story. And this is the funniest thing. When I got to call 28 or 29 he goes and he referenced back to like voicemail like 15 or right, something. Yeah. he goes he goes did this really happen like did that truck actually do that yeah and i left him in that motion of a sequel based sort of sales style yeah does that make sense yep. <laughs> okay so here's here's that to, to go back and to answer your question what does number two sound like Right. <laughs> Besides what that sounds like. <laughs> I apologize. I am a child some days. <laughs> when you are following up on the second call, I'm a big believer in referencing back to something that you two connected on okay. the first time. Okay. okay. I loved that. Uh, I'll give you an example. I was making calls with a guy last week. We are uh, we and we followed up with him this morning. Okay. Last week, we talked about Mexico. Mm. This week, I kind of hit on, you know, I wish the weather was like Mexico this week, right? Mm. It was a connecting. It was a way to build trust and start the conversation, okay? If it's all business, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe that's how you read the motion and that's what they're expecting is all business. There's nothing wrong with that situation. Mm. Then follow back up with something that you connected with on that. You know, flatbeds are tough out of, out of Chicago this week. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. So I'm a big believer in the second call should, you know, he says potential customer for the first time, you connect and exchange paperwork, but now when you pick up the phone, what's your action item? Okay, right? At this point now, you need, you, you, you should try to exchange going from paperwork to quote. You know, the other thing that I'm a big believer in, okay, if the paperwork was one way, yeah, send me over your paperwork. Mm -hmm. They just wanted your insurance certificate and MC, right? 
then you need to start giving him forward thinking thoughts, a part of your conversation. Let me give you an example. Okay. Hey, I was getting you set up in, in my system, but I wanted to understand how quick do you pay your bills and who is your contact for accounts payable? All of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, I should probably connect him with this. Mm -hmm. I need to start the process of finishing the SQL app, mm -hmm. right? I got to get into accounts payable. I got to get into what their expectations are. Hey, in order to pay a bill, what do you need from us? Do you need a bill of lading, a proof of delivery? So those things, as you get into your second calls, if you've already exchanged paperwork, then I would do two things okay the two roads that come up are accounts payable who is the contact what bills or what paperwork do you need in order to process a bill right so there's your first one we just went operations the second one is then go into hey you know we didn't really get a chance to talk about it when do you close when you communicate a quote or a load how quick do i need to have a truck there mm. right start talking to operations right you just hammered out the paperwork that's the easy part Let's figure out how to, you know, what are your expectations? What do you need from me when I book a truck? Do you need me to send a bill of lading? Do you need the driver's name and number? Do you need the trucking company? Right? Those are things that you start talking logistics. You know what I mean? You start talking those things. So give them some forward thinking thoughts, counting, how do you pay? What do you need to pay? And then start talking operations. Hey, I'd love an opportunity to give you a quote. The quote may not come until the third call, but leave it a sequel. Mm, Jared, that was that was a great example. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those I mean, are the things that you need to be thinking about right. in order to be successful on number one, sequel. Number two, forward thinking thoughts. Number three, let's get into the meat, yeah. right? And maybe they're not ready yet. Maybe you haven't built up enough, uh, enough trust. If you haven't built up enough trust, then you need to start understanding what it is that they like about their current vendors. I love that. Right? What do you like about them? Hmm. What is it that they do that you like? And then relate. Come back to it and say, oh, I love that that company does that. You know, a process that we've been working on here that's been successful for us is blah. Build trust. Dude, you just brought the house yeah, right there. That's what we do. That's what we you do. know, we got you know nine people on. I don't know who's all on, on LinkedIn. Um, throw a thumbs up in the chat. My man Jerry just went off right there. Yeah. He throw you know throw Sequels. some thumbs up in the chat. Sequels. Let me know if that helped you. Um, T. Herrick, success isn't always about greatness; it's about consistency. Mm, I agree. You can actually be a really mediocre sales guy. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, to be honest with you, a lot of people say that. Uh, this is an interesting question. This is an interesting point. I love Tiaris. This cat always is on yeah, supports us. A you, big, man. big yeah. shout out to this guy. He's a big, I'm a big believer in him. Um, but throw some love. Thanks for here, the hearts. Here's here's what I uh, uh here's what it, uh, hard work, anymore. hard work, yeah. Essentially, in some particular cases, is just the amount of time that I've had to do this, yeah. right. I've done it for long enough. I can be a mediocre sales guy, but if I'm consistent and I'm really, honestly, I would say that I'm, I'm not the greatest. I've met people that are way, way better than me at communicating. Mm -hmm. I still fumble on words. Yeah. Right. I still don't. It's not, I'm not a silver tongue. I wish I was a silver tongue. I'm not. I just, nobody's worked, perfect. I've right. just worked harder to, right. to do it. <laughs> on the one of the cold calls today. <laughs> I said, this was my accident. I said, Hey, you know, we're going to be out there Friday. But what my goal with this guy was, is he wanted to make in-person calls. So we were setting up times to do in-person calls. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I said, Friday, how's Friday look? And he, he goes, Friday looks good. And I said, well, would you rather meet at the bar or the coffee shop? What's your cup? You know, yeah. what's your cup? Yeah. That didn't set the way I was hoping for. <laughs> I know it was eight in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to well, see, you, yeah. right? Not everybody likes my stuff. Yeah. Oh, for right? sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I'm with T. Harris. Yeah. Consistency is so huge. Right. And the way I imagine, like, when you're afraid broken back in the day, even on calls now, you know, you hear so much things and you kind of reflect on, okay, I've heard this before. How did I re, you know, how did I reply to that back in the day? Right. Mm. So I think when, if I could spend a moment in your brain, that's how I imagine it. You've been through so many calls and you've, you've heard a lot of things, right? You've been turned down a lot. Yeah. And I almost feel like in Jared's mind, it's like, if I get told this, I'm going to come back with this. Yeah. 
and that's from learning. Yeah. That's from picking up the phone. Yeah. That's from grinding it out. Like, and I, and I know that, uh, that's going to happen for a lot of the people watching today. You're going to catch up on that stuff. Yeah. You know, people always were like, how does Jared do it? I'm like, pick up the phone. Like, yeah. You, you know, no one's going to be like you, obviously be yourself, be yourself, just learn, grow. Yeah. It, I, I thank God for the Hardy boys. When I was growing up, I don't know about you guys, or if you even know what this books are, but the Hardy boys was a choose your own adventure style book. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that for me, which by the way, I should get into choose your own adventure books. We need to bring those back. Something for later. We'll talk. But uh, because I found out early in my life that I can choose my own adventure. And, you know, if you want this scenario to happen, go to page 85. If you want this to, to happen, you know, now there's some weird logistics to that, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you think about like a choose your own adventure, like right. let's go to 85 or go to 74 or go to 62. I, I love a good choose your own adventure. And there's a reply that gets you business in every aspect of life mm -hmm. or gets you a date or gets you further along than where you were at. I like how right? you pointed at me. And well, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like hitch, right? Yeah. Hitch the movie with Will Smith yep. and, and, and uh, James, uh, James, what's that cat's oh, name? You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, <laughs> there's a, there's a way to take every conversation and you just need to think through that, that yeah. response. I agree. So those are my and thoughts. Yes, and yes, I do need to get a date. I agree with you, Jared. You know, we got a, we got <laughs> maybe like, the last we maybe got like 10 minutes, but I want to talk really quick about, because we got some carriers in the chat. Mm. Uh, back in the DOS. I love carriers, days. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, we do, man. Um, talk about maybe, give, give us a few advice for carriers that are trying to go out and do their own thing, making calls, mm. or just kind of grinding on the phone. Give us a few, you know, what would you do if you were in the chair? You know, how give them some good starting, you know, starting points. You know, what can they do to kind of potentially find more direct shippers? Um, you know, we talked with some carriers as well. You know, we don't talk with you know as near as much as we do freight brokers, right. but you know, we do talk to carriers out there that are that are grinding and they want to find direct right. shippers. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, we don't do a lot on our our podcast here about carriers, and we're going to start doing more of that. Right. Um, but give us some advice for some of those carriers out there that are wanting to find. Yeah, direct shippers. Uh, the biggest value that you offer to, if you're a carrier, if you're a small carrier, is the experience that you have, right? You've been a, a couple things. God, these guys have been at the truck stop alone. Mm -hmm. uh, can you imagine the amount of lone, uh, the amount of loneliness that they feel? Mm -hmm. uh, like you got to recognize that first, right? Mm -hmm. Like these guys are out grinding. They're moving America. Um, they do what they do in order for me and my family and your family to, to enjoy walking into a building that was hauled or, or enjoy the groceries that we get from Walmart. Right? I love these carriers. I love the small carriers. Um, here's how you guys have to start to step up and get those direct calls. Number one, you got to just, you got to get over the, the scaredness that I can't offer them anything. I have one truck or I have four trucks or three trucks or 10 trucks, whatever it is. Get over that. You have value to provide. Now, here's your biggest logistical hurdle, okay? You're never in the right place with the right equipment at the right time. I, d damn it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the guy that I know that used to run one of my favorite trucking companies, he was just right out here. He had direct shippers, direct brokers, and then would use the load board, right? Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, here's what I can tell you, is he got incredible at making it easy to use him. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'll explain that a little bit more is he would let people know, and I'm not talking making some friggin' fancy Excel sheet and all this stuff. Yeah. You got time for that. No, he would just email every night and say, I've got, or every morning, depending on his situation, here's where I'm at this week. You got a load. Let me know if there's a little bit of grace. I'm looking for some freight in these five things. And he kind of knew where he needed to go and where he was going and why he was doing what he was doing, right? But every night, every night, he sent an email. Here's my three trucks. Here's the cities I'm going to be in. Here's the unload times on the loads that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. These two guys have tarps. These two guys don't have tarps. These two guys have logistics bars in their vans, whatever it may be, right? right? And so it was a quick hit to all his direct shippers, all his direct brokers, 
and he would leave the load board for the last second right. aspect. If right. these two didn't fill his his cup, guess what? So in my mind, you guys have to differentiate yourself from all these brokers that can just cover any load by over communicating what works for you, right? And so there's your first thing, right? Um, the second thing is just really identifying, and this is going to take a while, getting all those, you're going to have to, have, have you ever found a piece of hay in, in a stack of needles? <laughs> right? Yeah. I, it's a lot harder to do without poking yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So you guys have got to, there's a lot more effort that's involved from a carrier standpoint. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more effort and it's going to yeah. hurt a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> you're looking for hay in a stack of needles, Right. And I'm not talking like that. I'm talking sewing needles. I'm not talking like junky needles. It, like we're talking like that. We're talking regular needles. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But uh, you guys have to over communicate. And then from there, you're going to really have to, you're going to have to look through and make a lot more calls to get your network set up. Right. But I can tell you, here's what I can tell you. Once you get that network set up of direct shippers and direct brokers, mm -hmm. you could go for years. Yeah. Yeah, carriers, man, they have a weird amount of value they can offer too. Oh yeah, and, I, and I, don't get me wrong, I know obviously talking on the phone, it's, it's not easy for anyone, whether you're a broker or a carrier, yeah, or just a regular, you know, just working from home kind of right. guy. Whatever you're doing, it's hard. Right. It's not easy. Um, I think with carriers, you know, just same thing as brokers, just do it and you'll get yeah. comfortable. Yeah, um, tire killer only getting home two days a month. Damn it. Yeah. How are you supposed to be? What in the world's going on, tire killer? Yeah. Does your wife pack for the whole time? You remember he was talking about how he packs eats, some, like she, she packs, packs his dinner. God, I wonder if she does. Gosh, I gotta pack my own. I know. Um, C. Harris, you know, learn about your carrier. 100 percent, man. Yeah. Learn about him. Yeah. Respect them. Yep. And he says, make it part. Make him a part of your family team. Yeah. One hundred percent. You're growing together. That's how the way you got to look at it. Um, you want to. You almost want to be on texting terms. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, absolutely. You want to grow together. That's yep. the number one thing. Yep. That's how you grow. Absolutely. So, um tire killer you got to get home you know mm -hmm. go go hang out for a minute i know you get a little itchy and you're like i gotta get back in the truck and make some money right. go enjoy life you're a hustler man yeah you that. he's a hustler that guy kills it jared um you know i enjoyed the show today yeah it's fun i mean it was kind of wild you know yeah we, we're not in our studio today we're in our conference room demo room uh but thanks for chatting with us chilling with us and when he says studio it's just a uh it's a steel shed essentially that we may look cool <laughs> It's a studio. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, but yeah, they should be in here, guys. We're going to get off. Uh, we'll see you on Friday. Not sure what we're going to do yet, but we'll be here we'll be with the chat. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be in the studio yeah. next Friday or Friday. Um, we'll see if this Nebraska wind will settle down. Mm. Man. It's wow. real. It's, it's rough out here. It's real. It's real. Yeah, we're in the Wild West. Yeah. So Have thanks, guys.